Okay, we're live. We're on the air, and I'm with GQ Prepper and the Mountain Prepper, Ben. How you guys doing? Doing good, thanks. Awesome. And this is the first board meeting of RepealGunLaws.com. <laughs> uh, so you two are the first board members. <laughs> I, I do want to thank GQ Prepper for taking such an initiative to help raise money. I saw your um, video. Well, is it a video? Or did I just see it on Facebook? I did a post and a, and a little short video, just a, like a little teaser. Oh, that's right. I did see that. I don't know what's wrong with me. My brain's going bad. But um, thanks. I appreciate that. And, of course, oops, now i got to go turn off YouTube. I keep forgetting if you don't turn off the volume on YouTube, you'll hear yourself talking. So, I have some other invites out, and um, people who said they were wanted to be on the panel tonight, and so we'll probably give them, oh shoot, okay, Edge, I'm going to send you yours right now. Give me just a second. If you have anything to say, Ben, why don't you introduce yourself while I'm sending this uh, email. All right. My name is Ben, uh, YouTube channel Mountain Prepper. I'm from uh, Huntington, West Virginia, and uh, been a gun rights supporter and a gun lover since I was about nine years old, and uh, I'm with Tony. I think we got to do something about the uh, the PC ridiculous gun laws that not only are already in place but that I see coming down the road so that's why I'm here you see them coming down the road yeah I see that because too. that that's that's the that's and I'm not being critical I'm just saying that's odd to me because I expected I fully expected our new Congress in January to start acting right. <laughs> well, I'm not. I'm, I'm, Only if we fight them. Well, I, I agree with you on that. I don't think we're going to see any federal legislation. I'm talking about um, these states that are deep, deep blue, like California and New York and Massachusetts, and because you got to remember, there's we're there too. You know, we live in those states too. And it seems to me like every day they're just getting completely stripped. I mean, they they don't have chance. And I think maybe you know we can do something to try to stop some of that. I, you're right about the federal. I don't I don't think we're going to see any federal legislation at all. I think that uh, it's all going to come from the states. Well, we definitely won't be able to just sit back and relax and trust them by any means. I mean, we're still going to have to keep a close watch on them, but. Yeah, you're right. Wasn't it Washington that recently had that little slick move? Yeah, and that's how they're doing it. See, they're kind of, they're kind of just, uh, and in a lot of this legislation, it's uh, it's they call it a rider, I think, when yeah. they kind of flip it in with some other legislation, some backdoor kind of stuff. So you know, we got to be vigilant about that kind of stuff. But I agree with you, Tony. I mean, I think federally we're pretty safe now. You know, after the midterm elections. But a lot of these states, a lot of these state politicians are shady, and you see it all the time. I mean, you see it's little by little by little. Well, I think our job now is to make sure that Congress knows that, there's, that the midterm elections, it was a mandate, that it wasn't, there were no uh, accidents or, you know, coincidences or, you know, I think, and that's, that's part of what I'm, what I'm trying to do, and I hope hope we're all trying to do and um, it's funny because this kind of all came about with me personally um, I think I had made a comment on one of James Jager's um, oh, I guess it was a little flippant because uh, you know I, I kind of expect him not to, to to say to give me too much crap <laughs> but I, I made some little flippant comment on one of it. He was like, "What have you done, like, or what have you done, or what have you all done?" And I was like, 
you know what? You're right. I thought to myself, I didn't, I didn't even answer back. But I thought, what? Yeah, he's right. I haven't done anything lately. You know, we went to the, to that's how I met GQ Prepper. We went to the gun rally. I mean, to say we were all standing there together. We mean what if? Well, lately, yeah. I, I guess we haven't done anything. What in a year now? Yeah, I mean, I mean, he didn't say that, but I thought to myself, I thought, well, yeah. And you know, now that we have this um, supposed uh, Congress to our in our favor, in a, in a seemingly uh, substantial mandate, we should we should at least at least try to do something. Um, because the and the problem is is that if we don't get ahead of it, you know, we can kind of rest on our laurels or whatever. But if we don't get ahead of it, uh, you can you can uh, bet for sure that those on the left are going to be coming uh, coming up also, you know, coming behind us or in front of us or beside us, <laughs> wherever they are, they're going to be yeah, there. Yeah, that's, that's kind of what I was saying is, you know, <clears throat> we did, uh, you know, we won a lot in the midterm elections, but it's very important that we don't get complacent and think it's all over because it's not by, by a far shot. One thing I would like to do is try to um, come up with a you know a set of goals uh, because you know one one thing one thing people like is a clear cut goal, especially if you're asking them to uh, to donate, you know. And I I think to me the gun laws uh, and I wanted to focus on federal. I've had like five or six messages from people, you know, from personal messages saying. Oh, we need help in my state or this state or this state's going crazy. But honestly, I think we have to focus on federal gun laws as a group. Uh, you know, maybe we have um, you know areas where we help people locally. You know, we help with that effort, but our focus has to be on federal gun laws. But um, you know what I mean? I think I think it just makes sense uh, if we're a a group that's coming from you know different states across the country that that we have to um, you know have a focus in one thing I would like to do is focus on the gun laws that are sort of punitive or don't really focus on safety and I think one of those laws is or it's not laws but one of those areas is like 922R where there is no relevance at all. You know, there is there is no um, focus on safety. That that one paragraph alone, or those paragraphs alone, have nothing to do. They're purely political. They're they're you know they defy the free market. They they're isolationists. You know, they're it's protectionism. You know, and and I know I'm going to have people who are members of the website who. And disagree with me, and that's okay on that issue as far as whether we should try to protect American jobs or not. But I don't think it's really, I think we have to, if we don't focus, if we're not like a laser beam, <laughs> and we say, and we don't say, you know, whatever the side effect is of this, of repealing this law, that we have to do it based on principle. And whatever the side effects are, they just have to fall out. You know what I mean? In other words, we can't worry about, um, you know, uh, repealing 922R is not going to affect American jobs. That you know, it may affect whatever some small percentage. But but the the message that we send by repealing one or two paragraphs out of that law is going to be huge. You know, even if we can't repeal the NFA. <laughs> As a whole, and people may, we may as a group decide that repealing it as a whole is not necessary or is not, you know, practical, you know, and that's why we're here tonight, hopefully, to have those kind of discussions. But, but picking a picking a goal that can be achieved, you know, choo choosing a goal that we can actually accomplish, um, as a as maybe maybe if we make it a baby step or. <laughs> You know, something we can accomplish just to get it started, uh, to send a message. You know, I think those those laws like that that are, you know, you're gonna have ten parts, you know, made in America. That 
those parts, you know, changing the parts on a rifle, the hand guards, the butt stock, none of that has anything to do with safety at all. It's purely political. And, you know, you know what I mean? It's, it has nothing to do with anything but a political party trying to harm another political party. Yeah, and, and, well, let me ask this. Um, you know, uh, and I, I'm for anything, but in, in that one in particular, uh, just your opinion as far as, I don't know, would it maybe be easier if we pick something that would be easier for more people to get behind, like one of the NFA regulations, something like that? I mean, you would you could probably get more backing off of something like you know uh, suppressors or something like that than than what you would uh, the uh, foreign parts. Yeah, the sil silencer suppressor thing, right. muffler, whatever you want to say. Call it. I think the NFA actually calls it a silencer or silencer muffler. Or muffler. Yeah, I think. Yeah. I mean, you, you. That's that's a good point. Every, who who can't get behind that? I mean, uh, that's I've, a ridiculous law. That's. I've lost my hearing. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, a, you know, that's that's yeah. a safety issue for you know I, that. Yeah, it's a safety issue that they're keeping the safety away from us. Uh, but you know. I, there's not a single gun law or restriction out there I can really. Agree with, so I'm fine with getting rid of any of them. I'm just thinking, you know, as a movement, uh, maybe pick something where you get the most people behind. Yeah. And 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 to be honest with you, you know, for me personally, the 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 silencers are, are not top of the list, but I think that would be one that I would think that either your suppressors or NFA restrictions on butt stocks and barrel links. I think that would be a big one. It probably oh, not SBR. the biggest. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we can't get rid of these stupid arm braces. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know. I'm trying not to. I'm trying not to pick things that are too personal to me, you know, specifically. But I hate right. those arm braces. Oh, I hate this. <laughs> I've, I've got, I've uh, got two of them. I'll give them up in a heartbeat. Uh, yeah. You know, it's, um, you know, for that's me, it. it's like the the silencers. You know, that's, you know, for me, it's it. That's a safety device. It has nothing to do with anything tactical. Where I'm able to shoot, I've got neighbors nearby, and I would love to shoot and not, you know, wake them up from their nap or, you know, disturb them from watching TV or having lunch or something like that. Right. Right. Um, and again, with the SBR, uh, you know, I refuse to go the NFA route. That's the reason I've got a couple of those stupid braces and. I've gone to bullpups is because I travel outside my state, and that's just one more hurdle I have to take. You know, if I go in and do an SBR, it's just it's it's ridiculous. And I think right now with those arm braces, I think the good thing about them is that they've gone to show just how stupid they are. See my thumbprints. <laughs> See my SBR paperwork for my PPS 43C. Well, I stopped after I got I stopped. Halfway through the process, and I said to myself, "What in the crap am I doing? I should be trying to fight this law, not support it by filling out paperwork from in, you know that has no end." So, um, and that's exactly why I don't have a PPS forty three. I love those things. I'm not paying two hundred dollars to to break the weld on the stock of it. I'm not doing that. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, I I would love to put it. Well, I'd love to be able to break that weld, but I really would love to put the wooden stock on it, yeah. you know, to kind of make it sort of go back to. And I was I was almost ready to go to my gunsmith, and he was going to do a little barrel extension for me. Uh, I think a nine inch or a seven inch or whatever. And um, I thought, and then I thought again. I thought, what am I doing? <laughs> we need to change this stinking law instead yeah. of making my gun look like a. You know, a weirdo, you know, thing from Saudi Daisy or whatever, you know. Well, I mean, uh, and honestly, what purpose does how long the barrel of your gun serve as far as safety? Well, you know, they were, they're trying to keep it from being concealable, right? But, but see, that to, the whole thing is defeated to me when the ATF gave their opinion on the on those arm braces. Nobody, I've seen one video out of probably a hundred where someone was actually using it as an arm brace. Nobody uses it as an arm brace. It's a butt stock. 
that meets the requirements or that the ATF has turned their, you know, their ugly faces to, you know, that that's all it is. And so why can't I have my little wooden stock? You know, it's funny because I started to make, I started to get some straps and strap them on my wooden stock and say, this is an arm brace, you know. Uh, well, you know, the NFA, you know, when it got put into law, I mean, just quick history, I mean, there's a bunch of opinions on it, but one of them that I would pretty much agree with is you had a bunch of federal agents that was going to need jobs after, you know, they, you know, made alcohol legal again. And since then, uh, well, let's, well, before then, you know, you could buy a Thompson at your local hardware store, and, you know, there were no problems. Um, and since and since the NFA regulations, really, we've had no problems with any of those things that they've mentioned. I, well, we've had two incidents maybe in the past since, well, since the NFA where someone used, uh, committed a crime using fully auto weapons. Um you know, if anything, it's been used more to, you know, I hate to sound like a nut here, but it's been used by the ATF to, to murder people. It's been used to falsely uh, imprison individuals. Uh, it's been used to walk guns across the, the, the uh, down to Mexico and to, to, to the cartels. Yeah. You know, it, it has, it, the NFA restrictions have, have not benefited us in any way. And it did not protect us in any way. It's just been used to hurt us. Right. I agree. I guess the YouTube message system is not working very well because I sent Edge a link and he's claiming that he didn't get it. <laughs> so sorry about that, Edge. I mean, I'm resending it as we speak. And I've got several other links out. Hopefully people will show if they don't. That's too bad. Well, we're going to proceed. Um, but I, I'm going to throw in one more thing, you know, with, you know, again, with the NFA restrictions, since it was, again, it was prohibition was repealed. You know, we legalized alcohol. We had to get federal agents jobs. We created the ATF. But one of the things was, you know, they were complaining that the criminals and gangsters were better armed than the police. Well, now we got a town in Missouri that no, no one's ever heard of until here recently, who where their police department has access to tanks. So I don't think that the, the, the I don't think the local population is 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 outgunning the law agencies now. Right. That doesn't hold any water anymore either. I mean, even where I live, I. You know, I, I live in a city of about 70,000 people, and, you know, our, our cops walk around like, you know, like they're in Afghanistan or something. Yeah, they're all tacked out now. You know, they all of them have ARs in their trunks. Yeah. I mean, and they've got the, you know, they've got the chest rig and the, the tack pants and the, right. you know, bloused over their boots and the caps, and it's just like, really? I mean, you're pulling me over for running a red light, and you look like... You just jumped out of a Black Hawk or something. What's there's going? no Andy Griffins out there. No, no, there's not. There's not. I'm just gonna go ahead and post the link on the website. I'll just, I'll just be brave. Maybe asking for it. But you know, I'll be honest with you. Um, you know, I really thought. Um, let me, let me back up for a second. You know, I do have the giveaway going, the VanQuest IBEX 30 giveaway. And in, in that in that video, I just say, just register on the website, and then that's the first thing to enter. And the only th other thing you have to do is write a short letter and save it as a PDF document and email it to me. Well, I've gotten three so far. And I, I'm really kind of surprised at the response. Um, and, and the reason I'm saying that is because my theory is probably is painting out to be true, and it's, and it's this, is that we've, we've accepted, we've, been, we've conditioned ourselves to accept gun laws, you know. And it doesn't seem like there's a real big... You know, everybody everybody gets really excited if there's like a new ban or a new thing coming. But 
that they don't think twice about the laws that are already on the books. You know, we just we we build industries around them instead of, instead of repealing laws. We go out and create silly arm braces to, to, to work around it. You know what I mean? And slide fire stocks. My God, you know, we can't have automatic firearms, so we go out and, and create plastic things that will slide back and forth real quick. Well, I, you know, I'm mm. again, uh, silly as they may be, and I even agree with that. I'm, I'm appreciative of them existing because I think they just provide evidence of how silly these laws are. Right. Well, anybody that knows me knows I'm a capitalist and that I support capitalism, okay? And I have nothing at all against the companies that have created the products, and I hope they're very successful. But it's it's almost, um, it's all, to me, it's like a spoof on our society where, um, like I said, instead of fighting gun laws, we just accept them and, and, and the fact that we are so creative in America and so industrious and so inventive, we just create, we create. It's almost like we say, oh, yeah, there's a gun law. Let's go create a product that will slide around it. <laughs> and that's fine. That's great. It's, you know, and I love well, it. But you know, why, it not put the same, why not put a little energy into repealing the dang law instead of, you know, instead of accepting it? That just I, befuddles me. And I agree, but you also have to realize, um, you know, all of us talking here, we've not known a world without them. That's so exactly it's, what it's hard to wrap your head. It's like all of us talking don't know what it's – we we don't know what it's not like to have the IRS pull taxes out of our paychecks, you know. Um, right. You know, we, we've grown up. We've That's all we've ever known, and we need to train – we need to change that thought process. That's what I was going to say. What was the NFA, 1968, 67, 30, 68? 30, 32 or 34? Not actually. Oh, I, was back in, I know, that was the machine gun thing, but the, yeah, you're right. That was the NFA, yeah. Then the, the last was 68 before the Clinton, uh, for that nonsense with the, uh, the assault, assault weapons ban. Um, but that's what I mean. You know, nobody, nobody has ever known anything else, so it's not like, you know, they feel like anything's ever been taken away from them. See, that's that's exactly what I think GQ was trying to say is, you know, if you don't know, like, you know, they say you don't know what you got till it's gone. Well, if you never knew what it was in the first place, you don't, you don't even think about it, you know. So. There's the edge. And here's the great thing about freedom, you know, if we get these, if we are able to get any of these laws re repealed, if you don't like silencers, you still don't have to go buy one. You That's don't have right. to go buy an automated, you don't have to go yeah. buy an automated uh, full auto firearm or anything like that. That's the great thing about freedom. No one's going to force you to go buy this stuff. If and anything, it just provides, it, it, it puts that um, one more brick in that wall, one more obstacle for the anti-gunners to have to overcome. And you can still go buy that crappies. Arm brace, if you want to. If you're Sig's not going to go out of business because you got some, some kind of brace. disability where you really need an arm brace. <laughs> if you don't have a left arm and you really need an arm brace, I'm not. I'm not like making light of the fact that some people don't have arms. Sure. Uh, but I'm just saying there will still be a market, you know, there uh, for it, you know. It's it's not like you know because the first thing I heard when I said well I want to you know I want to do away with the NFA people were like oh well what are we gonna do you know <laughs> it was like you took away their puppy or something you're gonna you have fun you gonna have fun what you're gonna do yeah I mean I, I, I it's enjoy yourself it's it's beyond me um to be hey. So, Edge, what do you think? What What would you, if you, if somebody said, "Hey, what would be the first thing you would repeal if you had the opportunity?" And well, you, the, huh? the, the NFA is a one thing as well. You know, obviously, um, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's it's caused a lot of restrictions for people to be able to afford and uh, get their hands on some fun some some fun stuff that they can you know utilize. Um, and you know, also like you know, as far as like silencers or suppressors another 
a device that people always say all the time, you know, would help you as a hunter, uh, the noise pollution, whatever you want to call it, in the background, all kinds of stuff they could, you know, you could utilize to, you know, maybe with your neighbors, you know, some people have different laws in their in their state of, you know, you can shoot on your own land if you have a, you know, nice property uh, where you can go out and hunt and whatnot. Um, I mean, stuff like that as well as, uh, I mean, here in Texas locally, uh, we have a, we can open carry a rifle, but we can't open carry a pistol. And that's another mm -hmm. fun one that's just ridiculous. But again, then we have a city ordinance within San Antonio that says you can't open carry that rifle. So <laughs> it's mm -hmm. just it's just a mess uh, sometimes. And Dan, the latest uh, uh, governor uh, who's who got elected, and he'll be taking office soon. He's already said if they present him a bill, he will sign an open carry um, an open carry law for pistols. And that's that's been met with a lot of reservation as well, and uh, a lot of uh, a lot of people saying that you know that's just ridiculous. My, I had a discussion with my father; he's also another concealed carrier. He's like, it's ridiculous, and I go, I go, why? What, what's what's the worst going to happen? You're going to spook some folks, maybe, and they're going to get upset. And I was like, no, you understand. And I told him all these laws are all set up that don't help anybody. That's a good, that's a honest, you know, law following. Uh, Gun owner, it only helps the people, the people that don't follow the laws, and it's just more laws that it tackles the people that follow the rules. And these people are, you know, for the most part, are good, you know, good, decent people that just want to enjoy themselves and secure their families. Let me just try to right quick address something before I forget. Um, Automatic Bulls says the issue might be the PDF. Why not allow simple text files? That everyone is familiar with. What what I'm trying to do here is that, I mean, it would be easy for me to reproduce a bunch of letters by myself. Okay, um, what I'm trying to get people to do is create a letter that is personalized. In other words, you could type it with your computer, but I want you really to, to print it out and sign it. And then you know, there's several iPhone apps, and there's you can scan it and send it. If we, if I, if I were to just send a bunch of letters that were just all typewritten, and there was no personalization to them, you know, any anybody can produce that. But if you produce letters that are personalized, and and maybe we have a hundred of those or whatever, the politicians look at that and they they see that there was effort put into them. And any anybody can. You know what I mean? What are you chuckling about? They, well, I, I was just thinking. You know, my thing is, is I, uh, they. I, my opinion is, is they look at those automated letters as about as well as I look at their automated letters. Right. I was about to say, yeah. right. I, I sent one. I sent one to the president once about complaining about you know his pursuit of these, uh, you know, enhanced or more structured gun laws they want to throw down. You know, when after Sandy Hook and I got this letter saying, you know what, don't worry, I appreciate your concern and da da da, but. We got something that's going to come out that you're going to be very happy with. And I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> well, let me just say this right quick before I forget, too. There's a, there's, everybody's familiar with open office, right? Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's an open source, sure. free. You just download it, open the text editor. It's like the word processor part of it. You, you type out your letter. You save it as a, you know. I mean, I think you can actually, well, maybe not that one. You can't. Even if you were to somehow personalize it and then save it as a PDF, you don't have to save it as a PDF. But I can't, I can't get this across enough that if I send, you know, I'm going to try to send this to Bob Corker. It's just he's he's going to laugh at me if I send him a hundred pieces of paper that are all <laughs> printed out by a computer and they just have people's names on them and there's no personalization to it. You know, it defeats the purpose. And I'm trying not to be mean, but if if people can't take ten minutes to create a letter, you know I know I know that we're in the new age and we don't use, we don't really write letters anymore. But um, if you can't take a few minutes to create a letter, what are you going to do? You know, at some point you're going to have that off moment, and you're going to realize that it's going to take a little effort to. To repeal these laws. Yeah. What is it? Is it they believe that they have issues creating a PDF? Period. Is that is that what it is? I don't know. That was one of the comments. 
Okay. Well, well, didn't Ruger have a thing where you could go to their website? When, I forget it was about a year or so ago, maybe plus, where you would uh, go and type in, you know, your zip code or wherever you're at, and it would tell you who your local congressmen were, and you could uh, you could send the email, but you could fill it out there, and it would automatically populate. Yeah, I, I, I know, but the point I'm trying, what I'm trying to do is, I'm trying to collect these letters, and I'm going to send them in a, uh, all together. And I think it's going to make more of an impact. If they get a bunch, if they get a hundred letters from a hundred different sources, it's not going to be the same as if I send one congressman a hundred letters from one in one. You know what I mean? One envelope. Yeah. I think yeah. it's going to be a bigger. You know. I'll be honest with you. I've never created a PDF file. I don't. Well, you don't have to create a PDF. I mean. Well, I'm posting in the comments now. Uh, cute, C U T E, cute PDF. It's a free application. It lets you save a file as PDF. Any file is a PDF. Well, let's, let's just let's just say it's not a PDF. Let's say you take a piece of paper, an eight and a half by eleven piece of paper, and you write on there just like they used to back in the old days. <laughs> here's your sirs, and then and you sign it, and you and you go to you take it to your your scanner and you scan it and email it to me. That's really what I want. Okay. I would rather I would rather have that. I was just trying to make it easy on people. You know? But you will accept just written letters sent straight to you, wouldn't you? Yeah, I would. But I, again, I'm trying to make it easy. You know. Okay. Well, you got to give people options. I wasn't even I wasn't even trying to make it hard. That's the whole point. But um, if you want it, if you want to, I'll put. Uh, the address is P.O. Box 4489, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37405. And I'll put it in the description of the video once it comes to video. And I'll also do an up update tomorrow. But honestly, GQ, who's going to take the time to write a letter and put it in an envelope and stick a stamp on it and mail it if they, if they won't take 10 minutes to create a digital or well, some kind of scan. Believe it or not, some people are not comfortable with that. They don't. Yeah. Some people, my wife, she doesn't know how to turn the computer on, Tony. That's the okay. only way. All right. So that's why I'm here. I'm here to listen and learn. But what you keep saying about Honestly, I know that sounds crazy, but, you know, like GQ said, I'm, I don't know much about computers. And, and honest, I understand, but honestly, I was trying to make it easy. Oh, I understand. You know, yeah, I, understand. I, I would if if I thought that was the easiest thing, I would have asked. But I just thought that was like archaic, you know, technology <laughs> for people to actually have to do something through snail mail. There's people um, who still write checks, Tony. No, uh, I mean I do. GQ Prep, what you were saying earlier about using a uh, cute PDF. Uh, it's not a converter, but what you do is like you're about ready to print. You typed out your letter on Notepad or Microsoft Word. And you're ready to print, and at the very end, you just you, you click the change printer, and you tell it to use a cute PDF, and it converts it, and then you save it to a, do, a document, and you type type the name of it, and you email it. It's, it's pretty simple. Okay, I will be doing an update tomorrow, and I'll update. And that, but honestly, that's why I'm, I wanted to do this hangout was to get feedback. That's that's all I wanted to do, and to give away this cute little flashlight. This is a through night. This is a TS TS3 TI3 brand new. Those weirdos at through night sent it to me. That's a funny right story. It's a nice light, man. Right on. They um. It's gonna be a nice little flashlight. So we got to figure out how to give it away tonight. But honestly, those weirdos, man, I'll tell you, if you've never actually communicated with old-timey Chinese people, <laughs> then it, it's, it's really bizarre. Um, through not approached me, and I'll try to make this short story short. They approached me about three months ago, right? I mean, go back and look. I've been giving away... You know, through night flashlights for several months. Nice ones, two big ones. And uh, I've forgotten all the models. And uh, so I thought, okay, cool. You know, they stopped sending me stuff. I said, okay. 
you know, we're going to move on now. Lo and behold, a week later, they sent me an email as if they had never talked to me <laughs> ever. And I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I said, I made six videos for you, and you don't even know. <laughs> you know, I was, I was very, my, my, my pride was hurt, right? They hadn't watched the first video, and I had sent them links. You know, companies like VanQuest are really, they are really like a, VanQuest, Challenge Targets, um, who else? They're really good about, like, posting your videos that you do reviews on their Facebook page and saying thank you and acknowledging that you actually did a little work for them. But yeah, I, so my, my next funny through not video is going to be a, is going to be one that they will they will remember. Okay. Some of the companies are marketing uh, are hiring outsource or outsourcing the marketing to some firm um, for any response that once maybe would happen. No, these are this is these are the through not people I'm talking about directly. I was talking directly with them in China. And if you talk to other other people that they there's a little bit of a language barrier there. And the way they do business is just a little bit different. So there's a cultural barrier and a language barrier. And I think what they should do is hire somebody in America to be in charge of the entire American market for through and out. But anyway, that's just my little feeble. But we're going to have fun with it. So anyway, sorry. Side story. But... So what I'm hearing is that, um, you know, I'm taking notes, that really we want to start with silencers or mufflers or suppressors. But I think the NFA actually uh, references the word silencer and muffler. I think it's just yeah. Probably yeah. more best to get specific because, I mean, the NFA laws and regulations cover way more than just SBRs and silencers. I mean, there's destructive devices and stuff like that but I think if you if we focus in on something like cans or or barrels that more people would be able to get behind that well we would reference actual like 922 R is actually a paragraph in you know in the in the law so we would actually reference uh, specific language or you know in paragraphs in the law itself if we weren't going to try to repeal the entire thing. So, newest member to a certain time can you replace? So, also, I, I had a comment made to me, Stone Guy, why aren't you in here? I'm going to send you a link. I had a guy, somebody make a comment on one of my videos. I, I did a little vlog when I was driving about um, all gun laws are politically motivated. And he, he said all laws are politically motivated. And I was like, no. <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> you know, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal. Those are not politically motivated. Those are based on the laws of you know, human morality, you know, and, and decency and have nothing to do with politics. And I think it's important, the reason I'm bringing this up is I think it's important to understand the difference and to point out the difference in that law, some of these gun laws are specifically designed to harm a political class of people. Absolutely. Just yeah, as just as you had the IRS targeting conservatives for their political beliefs, you know we have uh, politicians targeting us uh, you know, for our beliefs as regarding firearms. I, I think the media, um, personally, is uh, for the most part in this administration is I've seen, of course, when there's a tragedy, people react and people obviously gather together behind something and, and observe it, but this. Current administration has has been always always at you know watching the media and and, and I guess the polls and and 
in unison and, and reacting to it and then, you know, obviously making laws and whatnot to, 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 you know, to, to, to support, you know, the, 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 the way the media is sculpting things. And um, it's all about uh, sensationalism sometimes, unfortunately. Well, you know, um, I heard somebody say that one of the rules of the Obama administration is never let a good tragedy go to waste. Mm -hmm. he, he surely doesn't. I mean, he jumps all over it to further his agenda every time. And see, I think those laws would be easy to target, you know. And that's, and I know people think I'm just. <laughs> people think I want 922R uh, repealed just so I can put my Russian plum furniture on my SK. I mean, my that's <laughs> SKS, my AK74. But that's not true. I I picked that personally because I know that telling me that I can't have a certain you know handguard on a rifle has nothing to do with safety or anything, you know? Whether it has a that Chinese pink furniture that turned out to be the wrong color or the Russian plum, you know, factory, original plum furniture, the rifle still fires the same, you know? And it's, just, and it's ridiculous <laughs> how we just sit around and say, oh, you know, we talk about, I sit in these chats and I hear people talk about 922R. It's such a technical thing and they know everything about it and they're experts and they, you know, they know exactly what it says. And I'm thinking to myself, you idiots, <laughs> why don't you repeal a stinking law? And you're, you've got all this energy you've put into your mind, you know, that using your mind to learn and study and it's it's like you're kissing the butt of the of the liberal politician that enacted the, that legislation. You well, know? that's everywhere. I mean, you look at somebody like Diane Feinstein out in California, okay, and she comes out and I mean she's been doing it for years, trying to ban basically any gun she can ban. She doesn't she doesn't really know what she's talking about, and she's up there telling us that um, a forward grip. Uh, increases the deadliness of a gun, or having a threaded barrel uh, increases the deadliness of a gun, or the type of stock it has on it. But the problem. Well, so what if it does? I mean, well, the problem is, is we all know that that's a bunch of BS. But when it gets splashed all over CNN and MSNBC, and the sheeple out there hear it, they believe. Oh well. If somebody has a gun that has a forward grip, you know, they're going to go shoot up a school somewhere. You know, it's ridiculous. That That's one of the things we need to fight is the media bias against people like us. And well, the, 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 me, the media that don't know what they're talking about. Well, to me, one of the things that need to be pointed out is, you know, talking about something that would be media worthy is that we have to realize is that gun laws, again, honestly, since the Second Amendment was penned, gun laws have been enacted everywhere across the United States. They're nothing new. But we have to realize what they've come from. They've always been where the ruling class was trying to weaken everybody else. Typically, up until this modern age, gun laws were race-driven. Race you were They were keeping firearms out of the hands of Native Americans, blacks, you know, it was a race issue. It was a control issue. Uh, you know, uh, it would be funny if I could see Al Sharpton or somebody getting up and saying, you know, how gun laws are racist because they really are, but of course they won't. But, I mean, that's the basis of all of them. It's control. Yeah, I, I agree with that completely because what I've noticed is, I mean, when people say, you know, you got to vote Republican if you're a, if you're a, a gun guy, um, they they – they, they talk a good talk too, but they they reverse themselves on popular opinion or what the media persuasion is going because not because they have to get reelected and, and the media is running everything, the the the, the color of, of, of the argument and it's 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 just it's ridiculous. So when people are getting all you know oh you voted Democrat because you know you're anti gun you know whatever, the thing is these are the same. I always compare the wrestlers going in the ring; they kick each other ass in the ring. And then uh, and then they shake each other's hands after that. You know, it's a good it's a good match. You know, you got me on TV. And next next time, the the other guy wins, and so on and so on. It's just that's that's where a lot of people are turning to, like being a libertarian because of these uh, politicians. 
And right. it, it, there's, just, there's just not a lot of getting done, and it's putting them, you know, to the task of we're not getting reelected. You. And I don't, I, I don't have much more than that on that particular issue. But yeah, but I understand what you're saying, but it doesn't do any good to elect a liberal over a, you know, I'm gonna. I, I agree. I, I may have a problem with the way uh, current conservative or so-called, whether well, basically rhinos, the Republican in name only. I have I have a problem with the way they're acting, but that doesn't mean I'm going to vote against them and, and you know move to the dark side. Just <laughs> you know what no, I mean? No, 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 no. To clarify my statement, I'm, I wasn't saying that, but but I agree with you what you're saying, I and mean, that's what it is. It's just it's I wouldn't vote uh, liberal, but it's so hard to determine who's really going to do what when it really comes down to it. When the polls are hitting them and they need to get elected. Well, where I live, you know, we're pretty well split down the middle as far as the two parties go. We're you know, we're about half Democrat and about half Republican, but what we have is totally different. Here in West Virginia, we have Democrats in name only. You know what I'm saying? We have, they're, they're Democrats, but, you know, they're never going to vote for uh, any gun control or immigration bills or all that kind of stuff. I mean, that's just not going to happen. Um, and, and then we get shocked with Joe Manchin, as you know, who, who sponsored the Manchin to me. Uh, background checks bill, and uh, when he did that, you know, he got so much flack for that back here at home that I think he really quickly turned tail on that and ran. So, uh, you know, we have a powerful voice, but the problem is the media is totally against us, and there's so many people out there that believe everything that that comes off of NBC or MSNBC that that's hard to that's hard to uh, to fight against. What um, I mean, I know I, I personally know Bob Corker, but I I will admit he's not the best conservative. He's no. he is a big time businessman. He he owned before he became mayor of Chattanooga and then senator Bob Corker. He he had one of the largest construction companies in the southeast and. Uh, and he's all business, you know. So where his his conservatism comes in, mainly he's not really a right winger, you know. <laughs> no. He, so you know, I, I'm I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to try to approach him, but you know, we need people. You know, we may need some of these newer Congress. You know these new representatives or senators coming in. We need somebody in the House of Representatives. Um, I, I I could I cannot back approaching Corker. I, I really couldn't. There's got to be some somebody else. I mean, you probably want want to go as far as hitting up somebody who's going to be possibly looking at running for uh, president in upcoming elections. But there there's got to be somebody out there. I just well, I was just giving that example is because that's that's the only person I know. In, yeah, you know, in, in Congress, but it would be nice if we had, you know, one of these sort of Tea Party types, or you know, somebody who's really trying to, I don't know, who really is going to back the the gun law thing. And it's just an uphill battle because there's such, you know, the they have such an entrenched process for getting bills passed. If you are, if you're, if you're a rookie. You know, in Congress, the the first thing they do is try to flip you into shape, and mm -hmm. you know you got to do this and this, or or your you know your legislation eventually someday is just going to be overlooked, or it'll be tabled, or it'll never make it out of committee. You know, this is this is what we're going to be up against. Or yeah. and if you buck that system like a Ted Cruz or someone like that, they go on the media and call you crazy and a loose cannon and. Well, you know, that's what I'm thinking. There's got to be a Ted Cruz light out there, you know, someone who isn't going to be worried about uh, opinion because they're about to run for president. There, there, there's got to be somebody better than Bob Corker, but maybe not Ted Cruz level that we could approach. I was a big Ron Paul supporter. I always thought he was an awesome individual. I always supported but see, Ron. the problem with Ron Paul was he was an isolationist. He he didn't really believe in free markets, and, and that I think that's 
you know, he, he was very protectionist, you know, when it, when it came to the market, you know, if I told him, I wanted him to, you know, uh, try to do away with the ban on, you know, <laughs> guns from Russia, he'd be like, now nah, we need to protect our own, you know, we need to protect the American jobs, you know, and that's, that's just, you know what I mean? If you're, yeah. if you're a freedom lover, you, you really should be believing the free market also, you know, right. It's it's not. Well, yeah, but we're 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 picking our battles here, right, Tony? Hmm. I said we're we're picking our battles right now, right? I mean, I would, I would like to think we are. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we're here to do. So, yeah. you know, I mean, yeah. I, and and I I don't think uh, uh, Ron Paul would be an option, and uh, unfortunately, Ran uh, he's going to be another that's going to be a you know probable presidential candidate, so you're not going to want to approach him. But like I said, there's got to be someone somewhere in between that, that, that is approachable that would, that, that would turn out. The only thing you can do other than that is have so many people uh, backing you or in, or in a group that people that you can't be ignored. There's only really two options. If you have a, a politician who, who's got clout who can make it happen, you know, and you support that person, where you just have an overwhelmingly huge number of people that can't be ignored. You know, I thought the other day I was thinking we need, we need to use democracy against these people. <laughs> you know, they're always they're always talking about how we're a democracy. We need to use that against them and, uh, and show them what what a democracy can do. You know, Tony, let me ask you this. I, I know. <clears throat> the focus right now is on repealing existing laws and I'm all for that but um, what about also trying to get some favorable laws passed and, and put some pressure on politicians to pass some things that we would like to see passed like I mentioned to you earlier or a couple of days ago the um, the open or the concealed carry reciprocity thing that right there is an issue that really bothers me because <clears throat> I can get in my car and be completely legal and drive three hours and get arrested um, because the laws vary so much from state to state and it makes people who are who are completely following the law as they know it it turns them into criminals and I think that's wrong. The hard, the hard part for me, and I'll just be honest with you, the hard part for me when we start talking about that is that you then you have to start. You know, you have states that have rights, right? Mm -hmm. It's a states' rights issue, and that's why I was trying to focus on federal gun laws because you know um, it's going to be very difficult for a small group of people. To try to start affecting laws in every state, or you can't, or or for we would be actually um, to pass a law for us to sponsor a law that said every state had to do something. We would actually be breaking our own principles by doing that. If you really think about it, we would well, be look. that would be a mandate. We would be asking the federal government uh, to 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 pass on the states, which I'm. I'm against. I don't think there should be any law that is passed at the federal level that mandates anything to the state at the state level. Well, let me that's just, that's uh, let me spitball another approach. Okay. Instead, what if we? I don't want to use the word attack, but approach strongly someone <laughs> like the NRA and say, "Look, we want some action." Some pro action. We don't. We you know. Let's let's. As I mentioned in my video, let's play, stop playing defense. I'm giving you money to work the system. Let's 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 go on the offense. What if we just take a different approach and go, uh, go like after NRA, someone like that. And can I clear up my comment real quick, though, Tony? Well, I, I meant to follow up by saying I wasn't criticizing your idea. I just, I just have, I'm, you know. I, I understand, and I, I believe just, states' rights 100% too. And you're right. Yeah. I'm not asking. I'm not saying let's make all states say, you know, oh, you have to have open or concealed carry. I'm just saying they sh we should pass a law that says 
you have to observe my right and the and and the laws of my state and the fact that my state gave me this license. Right. You don't have, to have it yourself. I'm just saying, how can they deny me my right I, that my state has given me? You know, the idea that of having that uh, be something that's in place is good, but think of just think about. The NEA is an example. We all, you know, who all thought that having the NEA was a good idea <laughs> at first, where you were going to have, you know, oh, they're just going to try to suggest standards for education, or they're just going to, you know what I mean? What, what, what? <laughs> and now we have Common Core in 30 states, you know, because we, because we have the NEA, you know what I mean? It's, yeah, I see. It's, we, don't, we really don't want to create a conduit for the government to have. Um, inter interference in each, you know, a straight shot to each state telling them what they have to do. I understand. Uh, but that's just my opinion. It doesn't mean it's... What a, no, what you're a, probably right about that. What do you guys think about people have mentioned in the past, not trying to get like all, you know, statesmen, but uh, of uh, dissolving the ATF altogether and coming up with something, uh, not maybe necessarily coming up with something else, but it's obviously... Uh, a source of a lot of tension for a lot of people on both sides. Get rid of as far as well. If you got rid of, well, I mean, if you got rid of a lot of the NFA, that would take a lot of their that a lot of their muscle away, right? You know, right there. Uh, of course, you've got the first couple letters still to worry about, but really, here lately, they don't do much about alcohol and tobacco. It seems that it's all firearms. Right. Except they did, well, <laughs> that was, I was getting ready to start a hornet's nest. Was there you go. They, they did just whack a guy on the streets of New York for selling cigarettes to homeless Well, that people. wasn't ATF. I know, I know. I know that's why I said I was just getting ready to <laughs> but, uh, Well, I mean, that was a government-created deal, too, because... If cigarettes didn't cost thirteen dollars a pack in New York City, that guy would have never been out there. Right. Well, yeah, very few organizations that have been created by the government have ever been dissolved. Um, I think mean, they, they they converted to something, but they've never been repealed. Like uh, Homeland Security. Uh, I mean, the OSA got turned into CIA, but there's very few establishments of the government that have ever actually disappeared. Well, just think. Yeah, and, and if you focus on the law itself, though, you you disarm them in effect. You know, uh, say let's say we don't give them the power to write their little opinion letters, and you know, you know, say which really in effect those are those are little quasi laws they're writing, right? Those are little laws they're able to write without even going through Congress. You know, to say oh this is okay and that's not okay. This arm brace is okay. Written by serves, individuals we didn't elect. Yeah. Which serves the Constitution. Yeah. A lot of that going around. If I was in the, if I was an ATF member, I would have said, I'm going to disapprove this arm brace just because it's ugly. <laughs> but you know what I mean? I mean, it's just something it's like someone's opinion. And that, that really drives me nuts also. Uh, being able to create law, create laws on the fly just with a letter, you know. Yeah. So, I, 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 it seems to me to that if we if we focused on something that was that we thought would, I mean, honestly, I never even thought about. I, I didn't think that that would be anything achievable in our lifetimes. To actually get rid of the ATF, I mean, that sounds like a, it's almost like a dream, but to me, but 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 trying to strike parts of an existing law seems to be an easier process, you know. Yeah, yeah you just make, make them irrelevant for existence. You know, if they can just write a letter saying it's not okay, then they can write one that says it is okay. <laughs> I believe that if if, if oh, I believe you know I'm being uh, optimistic that if you can. Uh, Obviously, display their ineffectiveness uh, and what they do, and get and get a uh, I don't know a party behind it or a cause behind it, a movement. But honestly, and, think about it. After after Fast and Furious, if the American people don't think that their their worthiness is questionable, what are you going to have to do? Right. You know? 
I mean, what? It, it's just amazing, you know. I agree. If that's if you can if you can attack it on a front that's, you know, if if somehow we were able to lobby a, you know, like we were talking earlier, a congressman or a senator or whatever, a representative actually introduced legislation, you know, and somehow it even got to committee and we were we got to a vote, at least people would hear about it, you know, at least it would be in some kind of news cycle or circle <laughs> and people could say, hey, we, we can affect this, you know, if we just work harder next time, maybe maybe it will pass, you know. I don't know, it's, it's almost like um, we have to do something. Um, to yeah. just get it going, you know. But the thing, like you know, we touched on it earlier. The thing is, um, and pardon, pardon my language here, but the thing is, you got to find somebody with the balls to uh, to sponsor a bill. Yeah. But guess, guess what, guys? We can also develop a candidate <laughs> for. Yeah. Heck, if nobody will do it, I'll do it. <laughs> you we know, comment. We have a comment from the Gun Channels that said, "G Webs for president." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. You know, the only thing about that is that uh, to get something like this done, we probably have a short window. You, you'd, I, I think we'd have to get an existing power. Yeah. Uh, because of the short window, as far as where we're going to have the best odds, that I believe that window, just because the way the American public votes. I believe the window is going to be short. Uh, probably too short to put like your own political. And you can see the tide turn in 2016. You know when the other half of the Congress is up for, you know when Harry Reid and Nancy Pelosi are up for election, which is amazing, isn't it? How they how they dodged that bullet. Um, I better not say that. How they dodged. <laughs> I'll be. <No. laughs> uh, you know ATF's what I mean? at your door now. I know it's funny. Um, you know, you could, you could see a totally different atmosphere in two years. You know, so I agree with you there. Um, but I, I think it's going to take... Um, that it's going to take a, an effort. The gun community is going to have to come together and start thinking about candidates eventually, though. You know, we, we can't just... We can't just sit around and wait on the right person to come along forever, you know. Every, it seems every every uh, politician has their own little programs, their own little pet peeves, you know. And it's almost like you have to breed a candidate. <laughs> um, so. Well, you're never going to find someone you agree with 100%. Oh, go ahead, Edge. <clears throat> yeah, it's one of you know, there's a lot of people in the gun channels community that uh, GOS and uh, Ralph set up that are monitoring and watching the chat as well, and uh, they're always you know Second Amendment, um, you know pro Second Amendment and gun lovers, and as always you know looking forward to chats like this. I meant to see. I meant to send. Uh, I sent out so many links. I wish I had sent Ralph one. Uh, I like his, uh, he has some good opinions about this kind of stuff, some level-headed, but I sent out a bunch of links and without much success, so, yeah. but, um, yeah, I mean, the gun channels guys, uh, whenever you got a check going on, it's always displayed and then they're always, you know, checking it out and just by all means, it's a big, it's a important chat, so they're supporting it. Um... It's it's almost uh, you know it's almost overwhelming to the point to where you say oh where do you start and, it's, and you just have to pick you know in the construction industry we I you know sometimes we say I say you know we got to do something even if it's wrong you know <laughs> just you know get get up get going get moving you know do something and then you learn you you find out if it's the wrong the right or wrong move as, as you know as you move you find out if it's right or wrong and so um, it has to start somewhere well uh, you know like I said we you know we we pick a fight um, you know uh, if if it's like uh, suppressors 
there's a couple of uh, companies out there and uh, other groups that we could join up with that, that could assist with that. Uh, I mean, that's one I think where, where there's might already be some existing uh, actions going on that we might be able to help push with or combine with to push on. Yeah, isn't, isn't Ohio trying to make it legal to hunt with suppressors? I have not heard that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I think... Um, I think I might have to Google it here, but Ohio is that what you said? I, I've heard that. Um, I, I thought there was a state trying to push for, um, for that. So you might be right. It may be that 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 issue has some steam behind it that we could sort of piggyback. You know, I'm not against supporting another cause. The only thing is, I just want to. You know, it seems a bit. It, that's great for the people of Ohio, but. Why, why not target the actual law that, that bred that law, the, you know, the NFA, and just kill it nationally? You know, why can't, why can't we put our efforts together and just zap it all together? So, I, mean, uh, so I, I, I know that there's, <coughs> is it Solico? I know there's a couple of, of, of silence make, silencer makers that have, Combined forces. Like I said, I just I know that's something that may already have a movement on. I think uh, suppressors might be one of the things that you would get more the more most support for from other gun owners. I think I just found it here. It's uh, Ohio House approves local political bill allowing gun silencers while hunting, and this is this has to be recent because I. I I read about them proposing it not a week ago, I think. So this has to be in the last few days. So yeah, I mean, you can kind of use examples, you know, sort of sets of precedents, so to speak. Yeah. You know, for a national fight. You know, heck, I'm all for that. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, like I said, I'll, I know there's a couple of companies out there that are involved on that. I'll see if I, I, I can't find them and, you know, see if what information, what aid we could, you know, give or what part we can take as far as getting that uh, some more forward momentum. Yeah, that's a good idea. You know, it may be that... Um, some of those people are willing to to uh, join us in our fight. Let me know where I can get an artisan patch. <laughs> you know what happens? I gave all my patches to uh, Eric, you know, Iraq Vet 8888 for the main cans they were doing. And um, so now I have to have some more made. Dang it. <laughs> I didn't get, uh, apparently they're going to do a, a batch of a thousand next, and I, I didn't get invited to that uh, that party. <laughs> I think you got to be a little bit bigger channel to get invited to that that party. Oh, then the hell, I got, I got no hope, but... <laughs> <laughs> I think G-Webs, G-Webs is having some patches made up for that, that round. Yeah. That's an expensive venture there, you know, it's a couple of thousand dollars. Yeah, well, G. Webbs is running like a patch of the month club right now, so <laughs> yeah. I've got I think I've got two incoming from him. Yeah, I got the lead uh, gun gear webs, we uh, gear websites patch coming in, and I'm looking forward to that. Those are really neat patches. I need to stop giving all mine away. I gave all my cool ones, the seven six two, you know, spam can patches. Those were those were some of my favorites, and I gave those away. I've actually got some coming in. I think next week I had some more. Uh, I had some new ones made that are coming in uh, using that company that I covered a couple weeks ago. What company? Uh, I can't think of the name of them. I did a video on them. Oh, um, I'm trying to find the cheapest. I route. checked on the Hero patches. Keeps on getting back to me. And you know, do you want to make a patch? I'm trying to trying to figure out how I'm gonna make one and. I can afford to do it for my logo. It can it can vary anywhere between a um, dollar to two fifty a patch just to have them made, depending on how many how many you're going to have made. Mutiny shop, that's that's who's making mine. Of course, I'm not getting big runs like you are, so I don't get them that cheap. But 
I imagine if I was getting a thousand of them. If you get a thousand, you can get them for less than a dollar. You know, but if you're going down to a hundred, they're more like two fifty, two seventy five. Are you are you doing the vinyl or the the embroidered GQ? They're uh, vinyl. Yeah, those are a little more expensive. Okay. That's always been odd to me that uh, I like the vinyl patches. I always thought when I saw them, they're cool, but I they were cheaper. The construction would be cheaper than because they have a machine thread or emboss uh, or whatever you uh, embroider a, a regular patch. And no but, setup cost. Yeah. Maybe when the market gets flooded a little more with them, the price will come down. <laughs> Well, what, does anybody have any ideas on who is in, who, how do we figure out, one thing that's frustrating for me is, you know, some people get the little chat window in YouTube, so you could say, okay, everybody that's here now say, I'm here, and then like you could pick a winner for the little flashlight, but I have no idea how we would pick a winner from the flashlight because I don't know uh, I guess I could say um, how do we do that hey, everybody send me an email that's <laughs> I can show my email account list or something or like I was saying earlier I don't know maybe uh, by the newest member who joins uh, the website um, and uh, at a certain given time, you know. What we could do is, yeah, we could go say, I could go, okay, this is what we're going to do. That's a good idea, but we're going to do it a little differently. I'm going to post, I'm going to say, um, to win the flashlight, post a message. After this one, <laughs> Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Actually, what? You got another idea? No, no, Tony. I, I, I'm really sorry, but I'm going to have to leave. I've got to hook up my wife's IVs. Are you coming back or are you going? No, it, 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 it takes me a while to get all that stuff prepped. Well, thanks right. a lot, GQ. But for, uh, uh, good luck to everybody, and uh, I look forward to our next conversation on this, all right? Well, thank you. Good Appreciate good it. Talk. Nice to meet you. Yes, sir. Okay, so I just typed a message in on repealgunlaws.com, so those people who stuck around for an hour and uh, are listening, if you go to repealgunlaws.com, how much time do we want to give them, guys? Uh, just me, you know, I don't know, what, oh. about five minutes. Five minutes. <laughs> okay, yeah, because you might be gone in five minutes. No, so, I mean, I'll say, I got nothing to do. If, yeah. Hitler. It's 10.31 by my clock, so 10.36, we'll see, and then we'll, then once we have our people, we'll decide. Watch nobody post a message. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it, it's the way to get people on. Uh, okay, there's Scars, Scars 187. Okay, good, Skynet, flashlight, flashlight. Okay, we got two. So then, what I will do is at, at 10.36, we'll cut it off, and I'll go to random.org. I'll start counting from the bottom up, like Skynet's number one, SCAR's number two, okay? And I'll, do, I'll go to random.org, and I'm going to go ahead and do it and set it up now. And then we'll just do the random.org thing. So what do you think, Edge, it's going to take to get people to come over from gun websites? I mean, it's free. I'm not charging. You know, we're not charging anything. No, um, I mean, uh, I'll post a link by all means. Uh, it, it just maybe, uh, I mean, shit, shoot, these people should join. And I'll, I will... Uh, Egg them on next time, you know. I'm doing my thing. I'm gonna put a link in there in the good websites. 
I mean, I, I'm not criticizing anybody for not joining. No. But well, well, no, well, no, but it's a movement that you're obviously taking your time. A lot of time you're a busy person as well, and you're taking the time to do it. So uh, it should at least, you know, by all means, get behind and support it. I, don't, I, don't, I can't see G-Web saying anything different. And, you know, get off your uh, ass and get something about it. G-Webs has actually already signed up, so I appreciate that. And um, I was asking him to write an article. By the way, that reminds me while we're waiting on 1036 to roll around. Mm -hmm. um, any, if anybody wants to write articles for the website, if you go to the website, repealgunlaws.com, there's a user blog. And I can set it up so that if you go to the user blog, you're, if you're an author, you, there will be a user meeting that pops up. And you can actually upload, you can actually create your own articles. So I know Dano, I've tried to get him to come tonight, but um, he said he posted an opinion, but it, apparently it was more characters than the message system would allow. So I said, well, just become an article writer. You know, I didn't hear back from him, but I can set it up, set up people so that they can actually contribute articles. And it doesn't have to be anything, you know, none of us are going to win a Pulitzer Prize. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I hear you. But, um, let me go back home. Steve and James, Island Z's Survivor, Cork, Mr. Cork, 71. So, 1035. We got one minute. Get a white hot. I'm going to put my. Let's see, where is my... I want to put this on screen share. Sure. Appreciate the invite, by the way. What's that? Appreciate the invite. Oh, sure, anytime. Always reminded me, too, because... Um, I just... You get, you know, you get busy doing stuff, and... You forget. I hear you. Send all the links out. Can you see that? Yeah, I can. Very clearly. Very clearly. Let me see. Let me see if I can make it larger. That was good right there. We had it. Okay, how about that? That looks good. Well, so I'm going to go back to... No, I'm going to go back to the website and then look. So I'm going to refresh this. 9.36 or 10.36 your time. All right, so we had one, two, three, four, five, six. Is that right? Ah, oh, Steve and James, you cheater. You can't enter twice. <laughs> 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 so it stops at Atomic. So we had one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay? Do you All see right. that? Looks good. No, I mean, do you agree? I'm, am I leaving anybody out? Uh, no. Just so uh, somebody, like you said. Uh, All right, so that said, okay. We had two people sign up that says less than a minute ago, so we'll include them. Okay, that's it. Okay. Last one, DFTDOT. What does that stand for? Def DOT. Def DOT. He's a good guy, though. Okay, so let's see. One, two, three, four. Five, six. So I will tell you those are mainly seven, gun gun channels people that are that are eight, uh, nine, nine people. Because Stephen trying to cheat and trying to go in there twice. Okay, one through nine. I'm going to generate eight. Right. All right. Go back to eight. Is that Bezzarino? Is that right? Let me count just to make sure from the bottom. Skynet, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Fezzarino wins. Fezzarino. Bambino. Fezzarino wins. 
the three knot. TI three. Okay, so Fezzerino, send me a PM with the shipping information, and I'll send it out tomorrow. There were a lot of a lot of people. The gun, a lot of people. The gun channels uh, actually uh, it, it dipped in there. Yeah, so you know what happened. So no, a lot of people. A lot of people. The gun channels people. Uh, the folks were uh, submitting as well, and uh, yes, I, I recognize a lot of names. But you know, congratulations to uh, Fezzerino. Well, I, I was just going by the website. No, no, I mean, you did it well. You did it well. Okay, all right. I thought you meant they were submitting their names on gun channels. No, 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 no. Sorry about I'm that, just... gun channels. I didn't think, I, I just, um, let me take this off screen share. So, not the best host, so hope that hope that works. That's all good, man. All right, so... Well, Edge, I appreciate you coming. Um, you hung in there till the end. <laughs> sure, by all means. Um, I'm excited about what you're doing, so um, I appreciate it. Well, I hope it's something that we can all all do and we can all get together on. And if you know if it works, if it doesn't work out, it's fine. I just felt like I felt personally led to do something, you know. And like, if if some other movement comes about and we all decide to get behind that or whatever it is, you know. Um, I'm willing to do whatever. So, on all means. Okay. Well, we're an hour and uh, I had originally planned to go an hour and a half, and so we're an hour and forty minutes. So, again, I appreciate you coming, and I appreciate everybody coming, and uh, just uh, check it. Keep up. Keep up. I try to post daily on the website and uh, I think we had a consensus that we were going to try to focus we were going to try to target silencers right suppressors mm -hmm. um, uh, mufflers <laughs> gun mufflers, okay, and, mufflers. Uh, so I'll I'll try to put something together and see what everybody thinks and maybe in our next hangout we can have some sort of course of action uh, awesome. based on that so call me throw me an invite and I'll by show way, if anybody has any contacts, any legislators, you know, somebody in, on the in the House of Representatives, uh, that would be cool. That's where laws are supposed to start start out, and uh, and then pro, uh, proceed to the Senate. Uh, but I guess if there is a senator that's willing to take up the cause, <laughs> we we shouldn't turn them down, should we? So, uh, but again, thanks a lot. Ed, I appreciate you coming, and thanks, everybody. Hey, no problem, man. I always want to help out. Thank you. Yes, sir. We'll see you.